Chris, what happened in Terra Stream 4 there? Uh, I just got loose. Uh, landed in the corner, got really loose, and uh, up in all the marbles for for the second lap, so it was all but useless. Did the resin contribute to that at all? Uh, it's certainly different. Uh, not much left at this point, I don't believe. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Definitely sitting here wishing, wish we had PJ one right now, but um, yeah, I can't say for sure. We were just uh, got in the corner, got free, and um, ended up in in, uh, in a ton of marbles up there. Um, so wasn't even able to recover for the second lap. How have you found how quickly this goes away compared to what the traction compound here in the past? Yeah, it's way different. Where I'm standing at right now, uh, we got the first group of, of practice got about. Well, probably three quarters way through it, maybe uh, somewhere, somewhere a little less. And um, it's like a light switch track loss, several tenths of a second. Um, we all just tanked, and uh, balance changed uh, significantly on the bottom. Um, I don't know, right now, I'm thinking the bottom's not going to be of much use once uh, once we get track swept and tops cleaned up. I think it's uh, I think it's going up. So almost like a few years back where everybody gravitated to the top and just stayed up there. Probably. That's my, that's my prediction right now, uh, unfortunately. Would you say, do you, is there anything that they can do between now and have the drum race? Do you think they'll reapply it? Should they just leave it alone and let it just wear out? Or? If it's, uh, it's going to wear out that quickly, um, that'd be like 15 laps into the race. So uh, I, don't, I don't know what to do about it now. It's, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think you can change anything to uh, to, to make it react any differently. If um, uh, I guess I didn't really predict that the res was going to wear out like that, like it did. Um, you know, we've used it other places quite successfully, but um, I'm certainly not not feeling like it's working the way I had hoped. I don't know if everybody else is happy, but um, not not liking where it's at right now. Dungeon Renewing Check, uh, Joey Logano was at the uh, tire test of the Portugal, and I believe he said something to the effect that you guys had talked after Phoenix last week and that you guys were good. Uh, what was the conversation like between you two, and uh, I, I don't know, has your stance changed on what happened entering Turn 1 at Phoenix last week? We talked. We're good. I think like the best guys in practice are still showing up to be the best cars, at least the couple I saw in Group 1. So, um, but definitely a weird change of events there from, you know, practice one overall pace or practice two and then the way qualifying took off there. So, yeah, interesting, Bob. If I knew, we would adjust the part. But, but it's like the rest coming out. Like, can you tell, like, and then the S is like, what do they do now? Like, do you just... Yeah, I'm with you on that. So, I, I, for me, it's just, I know it was a project of this car or, or what, but, like, it's just not as noticeable as it, for me as it was for whether it be trucks or extended cars. And those cars will like stick your tires in the train track and they just crash you around the bottom. Um, I don't have any of that sensation right now. Right away. So, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of an anomaly for everyone right now. So, yes. What um, what were you experiencing with the resin down there? It seems like everybody was slipping and sliding and you didn't really know what to make of it. Yeah, I'm. Definitely at a point where I feel like I need to gather my thoughts as well because I had a um, very unrepeatable session between practice and qualifying. Um, and I don't think it's track related. I'd say it's more tire related. So, um, yeah, kind of frustrated because I feel like I just wasted my, my Saturday. What do you mean by tire related? I bolted on a different set of tires and my car drove completely different. Some people are talking about the resin and feel like that that's burning off and that's changing things up. Is that not causing it or is that not as big of an issue for you, I guess, as opposed to? Uh, I think it certainly is responding you know, differently than what we've had with the PJ1. And um, yeah, it's definitely a lot different and doesn't have the same amount of peak grip um, past that. Uh, yeah, like I said, I've got a lot of variables I'm trying to sort through at the moment. Like that was a big, big line. I understand the tires are, but it seems like people are talking about just the resin. Just the, yeah, it's, kind of thing or, it's it's definitely a lot different. That's that's for sure. So um, I kind of expected it to be probably not to this much. Like watching truck practice, you, you can see those guys like struggled a lot every single truck that hit the track, and usually that's a pretty good tell of you know something being a lot different than everybody anticipated.
as a driver, is there a point where you start to lose patience with these sort of things, the resin and the PJ1? And should NASCAR keep trying to do something like this? It's hard to say. I mean, I feel like we've had a good on-track product the last few Bristol races as far as multi-groove racetracks by stage three of the cup races. Um, you know, Xfinity and trucks, I feel like that's a little different because I feel like half the time, whenever we have the traction compound like PJ1, something grippier, um, it, it starts to fade by the time the cup race goes out and then you kind of have two lanes. So I felt like they had a decent formula for it, but um, yeah, this is obviously new territory for everybody. What did you make of the uh, resin or maybe lack thereof and how treacherous it was out there? Yeah, it's, you know, it's just, um, I don't know if, you know, we had that quick caution at the start of our the Group B practice and I don't know, like there was a lot of dirt blown around, you know, from the jet dryer. I don't know if it just covered the bottom up with, with marbles and, and dirt and whatnot, but the track was obviously in you know terrible shape for our practice and really slick, really hard to get a read on. So I don't know, it was just really difficult, but um, kind of made it hard, you know, what to, how to know what to do qualifying. So you know, that hurt me a little bit, but um, you know, still a decent, decent starting spot for us. But um, we really, really didn't learn anything in practice at all, which is, is difficult. Um, we don't get much as it is, and then to not learn anything is kind of tough for tomorrow. I know there's a full truck race yet, but do you have any sense of whether they should reapply stuff before you guys race tomorrow or you just leave it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really know. It looks like it's still there, but it, you know, like again, in our practice, it, it didn't drive like it was there and the speeds weren't there. So qualifying the, you know, the lap times dropped back down where we expected them to be, where they were here, you know, last time around, uh, last time we we're here. So yeah, it's interesting. I'm not sure exactly what was going on. So, uh, do you even have any idea what the, 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 how things might play out in the race? Obviously, I think last year the fall race was like 40 so or so laps, and people started getting up to the top. 60 some laps started making moves, and like 100 laps, everybody was kind of up there. Yeah, I think the you know the guy that won ran the bottom a lot too at the end of the race. So I mean, it just depends on um, different stuff, and you know, even with the same stuff here in the last couple of races, they've all been a little different, you know, so the tires and the temperature and, and all those things, you know, there's there's a lot of a lot of variables there to, to know exactly what's going to happen. So uh, we definitely have no idea how it's going to go tomorrow night. I feel like the tires are different. You know, we completely wore our right sides out in practice and we didn't even run that many laps. So definitely something going on different than we're used to here. So do you pay even more attention to the truck race to get a clue or are you just you know what, you go to bed early tonight because there's <laughs> nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I you know, the, the crew chiefs, engineers are going to have their, you know, computer smoking tonight trying to figure it out. So um, I think a truck race will maybe tell a little, but, you know, again, our cars and tires are so different now than theirs. It's really hard to say. So, you know, if the, if the bottom stays good for them, then it's clear that the, the spray was still there for our practice. And then we'll have to figure out what, what exactly happened. With such an uncooperative racetrack coming back to the concrete, does it make you does it make you want the dirt back, or is it just a new chapter to explore? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's Bristol in general for me, so I feel like I had, did better on the dirt than, than the concrete. It's um, concrete's not been very good to me here, but um, we have had some strong runs over the years, just not any good finishes. So hopefully, uh, you know, we can change that around tomorrow. Did you learn anything with the short track package at Phoenix? You think will transfer to Richmond? I mean, I think we learned the tendencies of it, but Richmond is so different, you know, so completely different than Phoenix. You know, you're talking about running, you know, 60, 70 laps on tires at Phoenix and having, you know, half to one second of fall off. And at Richmond, you'll get that in 10 laps, eight laps, you know. So um, just the tire wear factor is so different there, so unique. Um, yeah, it's going to be different. But I, we got a general sense, I think, of, of the aero package. Um, you know, and I, I felt like it was, it was a, a good step. Um, you know, certainly the cars are still not great in traffic, but I felt like the, they weren't so sensitive balance-wise to traffic, um, at least for me. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I, you know, enjoy going to Richmond. It's a, it's a big challenge, and, uh, you know, our cars were really good last week, so hopefully that'll help us, um, you know, come Richmond in a few weeks. It's 20, I think it's 25 different winners in the next gen era, so you're talking 25 different winners about that in 70. Yeah. Five races. Essentially. I need to. I need to bank at 26. I was trying. This stuff's really hard. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really hard, but you know, nonetheless, just super proud of, of where we're going as a team. Uh, we've been freaking grinding, and scrapping, and clawing, and just uh, 
get a little better. Um, looking ahead to next week, Coda, uh, I know the restart zone's moved just beyond turn 20 now, as opposed to further up the track and all the chaos it created. What was that like last year, those last restarts? I think you were actually probably one of the ones I think looking at it probably benefited mm -hmm. about as much as anybody. Yeah. I mean, uh, but still, what was oh, that? Oh, we were forward, backwards, turned around, got some track position, held on to it. The fuser was falling off. Half the race would have come in under the green a couple of times. It was just an absolute mess of a race uh, for us that we were able to come away with an 11. But, um, I think that... So, I mean, I'm in, in the driver advisory council, and, and that's the sort of stuff that we try to pitch to the drivers. We try to pitch to NASCAR to try to save ourselves from looking like a bunch of dummies and driving in, to turn one because inevitably, uh, if there's a piece of asphalt that's not filled, somebody's going to stuff their car in there and just try to, however you can come out the other side, is however you can come out the other side. Uh, so I like the fact that we're trying to save ourselves uh, from ourselves because if there's... Uh, if there's any sort of asphalt on the road, then somebody's going to stuff it in there. This uh, today with, with the resin, it sounded like how much it's burned off um, and affecting the times. It seems like it's a lot quicker than what it would normally do. Is it catching people off guard or what? what's, what's yeah, kind of know. the impact? I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a chemist, so I'm not really sure how, how it all works. But, you know, the PJ1 really locks it down. And I think what the PJ1 does is, is it actually... Uh, adhere some rubber to it so you see a distinct rubber line this is doing it as well uh, but the tires almost are sliding over so it's I think it might just be grinding it off or just peeling it up more so than actually making the cars stick to the to the racetrack better um, you know I think I learned a little bit just by putting in the uh, when we did that tire test at Phoenix, we put the really soft tires on that everybody thought that it would, you know, slide around and you burn it off. Well, it actually induced less tire wear because the car drives better and it sticks to the road better, All right? So you're not creating any slip of the tire so it doesn't get hot. It just drives better. So I think PJ1 makes the cars drive better. Uh, doesn't create any tire slide here. You see guys on the birds slipping. You see the fronts kind of going away. So I think that in turn is just starting to peel some of that resin up earlier than what we expected. But had you had this issue with resin before? I, I don't remember it being at least this dramatic. And yeah, maybe I'm we've, seen, we've seen this compound at, at Charlotte, Michigan, some other places. And you just, it's a different way you load the car, right? You're asking a little bit different things out of the tires. You know, the balance isn't, you know, you're not seeing 3,800 pounds of load in the corner every single lap from 40 cars. So, um, yeah, Bristol's its own animal. Is it similar to Nashville because they use the same resin there, right? Uh, I mean, I haven't driven a super there in eight to ten years. I don't think it had resin on when I was there. No, 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 no the big track. Oh, no. Uh, it's like with the cup car. Different tire, so that I think the tire has a lot to do with it as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's the, the radius, the banking, all that stuff. So different, it's hard to even compare. So is it still kind of too early to know how this is going to race tomorrow? It'll look like every other Bristol race we've seen. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see. I've seen more tire, uh, actual marbles. I haven't seen marbles like, like this, what we've been seeing on TV here in, uh, since I can remember. Um, so, you know, I think that's really just trying to shred some tire. Um, so it's making the track really dirty. So it's going to take maybe a little bit longer for um, that top to get kind of blown off. And, and then you got you got have to see some guys putting some rubber down before you really trust it to go up there. So I don't know. Um, but cup guys know you know their cars they know how to really get the the top going at pretty early especially if some guys are buried feel like they have good cars they can go up there and start knocking the marbles off a little bit at a time until they finally get to the top and start making some momentum hey russ uh you got awesome bass fishing bush light car this week i got word from ronnie moore of bassmaster you're gonna be taking part in a, a celebrity fishing tournament this week what's gonna be the secret lure for you to win that one i'll tell you that's why it's a secret <laughs> Uh, no, I'm gonna rely on my, uh, my teammate to uh, to get me hooked up right. Uh, be no different. If he was coming to get in a in a race car, I'd take care of the uh, put the tires on it for him. Uh, he'll, 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 he'll. All right, good luck in that, but also good luck here at Bristol. Thanks. How critical is track position in a place like Richmond? Everywhere. Uh, I mean, uh, track position is everywhere. A car following another car it doesn't matter. Uh, I think from the from the time. We built the second car ever. It felt dirty air. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, 
I have mastered though the, the Richmond like 125 where I lead like the first 75 laps and then I fall back to 18 so we're looking to do the opposite. They've passed me. I figured out how to let them pass me. Now I want to pass them. What about pit road entrance? How, how tough is that there? It's tough to be too confident, so yeah, I definitely think early and slow uh, is, is the right way. Um, I've missed it before, I had to go around, I didn't, I didn't run over the box, but um, yeah, I just get down early and, and hug the wall, and um, if I give up you know, half second, it's okay. When do you start kind of looking at the playoff picture, where you stack up, if you don't have a win at that point? Yeah, you know, the, the season really breaks in the thirds, kind of always has, probably always will, especially with the playoffs, where you, know, you have the back third, which is the playoffs, and then you have the, the front two thirds, and, and I think once you get past that one third mark, the, the playoff picture becomes a lot clearer. What you need to do, and hopefully you've already done yeah. it, uh, but if you haven't, what you need to do to, to make sure you're in. And when you look at RFK collectively as a whole, you know, last week, first top five for both you and Chris, and stay tall in the summer last year. How much momentum does that bring into a track like this where both of you had to have that success? Yeah, I mean, it's just not a bad thing, that's for sure. You know, I wish we would have got the results that both of us deserved at Atlanta, and if we had done that, you know, we'd be. Uh, already checking that box off, but you know, that's kind of you know, wishing in one hand. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I was happy with where we ended up last week. Uh, good result, good finish, and, and uh, you know, certainly bodes well for coming into Bristol, one of our better tracks. And you've talked before about you know, the raw speed. Now, how can that raw speed and any other tactics help you snap that hunger in two races? Yeah, well, you know, when you have speed, you can dictate the race, and uh, you know. It's like making the first move in the, in the game of chess or checkers, right? You kind of dictate the ebbs and flows. Brad, with this weekend now back on concrete, NASCAR's done with dirt for now. What do you feel like the legacy of the Bristol dirt race is, and would you ever like to see that return? I think the legacy was we're not afraid to fail. Sports, you know, willing to try new things. Um, I think that's good. I don't necessarily think that dirt race was a failure. Um, I, I think there was some success out of it. I think. It would, it would be a failure the more you do it. Uh, it makes sense for, to do special events in a limited time window of two to three years, and it, it had ran that course. So uh, now it'll be interesting to see what the next thing is, right? Uh, and, but I love that about us. I love that we're willing to take chances. I love that the schedule is willing to be variable. I love that once we've done that, we're willing to say, okay, that's enough. Let's move on to the next thing. That's important too. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of drivers that are glad to be back on the concrete and it doesn't mean that the dirt was a failure uh it means that it you know kind of ran its course and now it's time for the next new thing brad what is something you've been in the sport long enough um it's the focus is making the competition so even what is something a talent of yours that fans can't see nowadays that watching you 10 15 years ago that talent was more evident to what you were able to do with the car and because of the car the tire the arrow or whatever that that yeah, the cars take significantly less discipline to drive. Uh, and when they take less discipline, your inputs can be more, um, you know, kind of ones and zeros. Uh, and I think that's that's probably the biggest frustration, especially the drivers that drove these cars 10 years ago. You know, I, I remember coming to, you know, tracks like Bristol, Martinsville, goodness, where, you know, you could never even go full throttle, right? And um, that took a, a really disciplined approach to how you drove the car, how you approached everything around it. Uh, that it doesn't require today. Um, and I think that there's some, you know, heartache around that. Now there's other things I love about the car. You know, that the, the next gen car has a lot of great attributes to it. You can run this car side by side so well. Um, it's kind of like, we want our cake and eat it too. We want cars that can race side by side, but can also require discipline in, in the driver's seat. Um, and it's, it's I feel like the next gen car coming in kind of swapped those things. It was like we traded the discipline that was required to drive the, the Gen 6 car for the ability to run this car side by side. And I think a lot of the drivers don't, are kind of in the position of if we just had horsepower, we could have both. And man, wouldn't that be awesome? And I think that's what's really driving that conversation is the drivers feel like that the, the best case scenario is a car that can run side by side while still requiring discipline to drive. And uh, that will put on the best racing and continue to showcase the best drivers. Uh, and I think that's where this hunger really comes from. And there's another question that's coming today just about superstars in sport. And everybody kind of defines it in different ways, but I think performance is, is, is certainly a factor. I think it's been 20, I think in the next gen era, there's been 25 different winners, which is an extraordinary amount. 
and so you don't necessarily have the seven, eight, nine race winners of maybe years past. Can can this type of car in this era produce superstars for the sport? Well, it's different. I mean, everybody likes to talk about Dale Earnhardt, and you're not going to see a Dale Earnhardt again. You know, not only was he a special guy, but the sport's not set up for that. It's, 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 there's more parity to your point than ever before. It takes less discipline to drive the cars. You know, a lot of people forget just how disciplined Dale Earnhardt was as a race car driver. He's one of the best points racers the sport ever saw. Now, he had a lot of moments where he went for the win that made highlights, but if you look back at his career, he was a phenomenal points racer. Um, and, uh, you know, that's not what the setup is now. The, the setup now is it's kind of the anti discipline approach between the way the cars drive and the way the playoffs are set up. It's a whole different ball game, amongst other things. Uh, and so, you know, you're, you're not going to have that, that level of star power. But, you know, bigger than that, we're still so reliant on corporate partnerships. And, and, and corporate partnerships in a lot of ways, especially the way they exist nowadays in NASCAR, are the antithesis to star power. Um, and, and so, you know, until we solve for that, which is a much bigger question, and certainly something I don't have a full how, answer how, for. That, so, how do you feel that so? Well, you know, I mean, you, you can kind of see it in a couple of guys right now who, you know, had locked in sponsors who didn't have to worry about the things they said or did. And, and now that they do, they, they, they act a lot differently. And, uh, you know, I, I think to sort of chagrin of, you know, maybe some of the, the fans of the sport that love to see when they, they didn't have to have those belts around them. So, um, yeah, and, you know, we're, we're not seeing the activation out of our partners that we used to see. That that's 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 been a challenge for us. So. Um, you know, we, we really need to work to a model that's that's less uh, reliant on that, and, and I, I think that's probably more critical to building star power than any of these other conversations. I asked this of Denny earlier too, that if horsepower is not on the table at all for all the reasons OD and Brad have all kind of articulated, could narrowing tires and the, the wheel investment that would be to is, is that amenable to you? Is that is that a, is that something you'd be open to? Yeah, why not? I mean, I. It's an engineering challenge that's probably beyond my ability to, to solve. Uh, but I think that certainly open to the opportunity to, to look at it. Yeah. Is that the other part of this conversation, too, that if we can't have horsepower, then it's a, about a grip conversation? Yeah, and in a way, that is the conversation, right? Is it's, It connects back to the discipline required to drive the car, which is a factor of the grip level of the car. And that's, that's really power versus tire. You know, and uh, you're, you're just trying to change the equation. You can do that one of two ways. You can either increase the power or you can um, decrease the grip in the tire uh, with the surface patch. So um, either one of those, I think, is makes sense. We talked a little bit about pick crews last week, but after looking at the stats, I think you were number two on the list with average fastest pit stops. What has been the commitment that you've made to get to that point? Because certainly- Yeah, there's a lot of people that like to know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm happy with not sharing that, but I can tell you, Lee, I'm, I'm really proud of where we're at. I think we have, if not the strongest, one of the top two or three strongest pit crews on pit road with the six car and great group of people. And uh, I'm super proud of them. They, they, they put us in position to win races. If we can, you know, drive elite vehicle speed to go with what we have there, uh, you know, we, we can be a threat to win multiple races and, and contend for the championship. Without getting into details, when you look at races being won or lost on pit road, what, you know, at, at what point did that become a factor for you? Because I know that you guys invested a lot in your training facility, but, you know, there, there's just so much more that encompasses it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the philosophy of what racing is has changed, right? You know, and pit road's becoming more important as we see more parity in the car side. You just, the areas that, you know, show the, the best ROI for investment are, are always moving. You know, you go back five years ago in the Gen 6 area, the best area of investment was, you know, on the engineering design team that was drawing up these cool widgets and CNC shops that were making them as fast as they could. And the you know, next gen car changed that. And so this guy, well, all right, what's the better value proposition right now? And I think a lot of the teams are seeing that the pit road has become a, a really good value proposition. Uh, but that could change, right? Uh, I thought last week was a really interesting case study in that, that the 20 car had a disasterful day on pit road and still won the race with raw vehicle speed. Uh, you know, I thought that was a, a big uh, showcase for the new aero package at Phoenix that you could see a guy who restarted, uh, I don't know, in the teens somewhere 
drive up and, and pass for the lead and win the race. Uh, I thought that was a big win for the Aero Package last week. And also, a, you know, a conversation around the ROI of, of pit crews if we're going to continue down that path. So this is a very dynamic conversation. So arrow more of arrow and talent and passing cars by some You know, that's what makes NASCAR so difficult is on any given week it can change. And on any given week you can say I need to have the best kicker to win. On any given week you can say I might need the, the, the best driver or the best car setup. Um, and you don't know going into the race. Your stops definitely kept you in the game last week, though, for the best finish RFK scenes. This yeah, yeah they, they put us in a spot to, you know, have top fives and do all those things, which we're, we're proud of. But... Uh, you know, not enough to win yet. We, we need other pieces. Okay. All right, Harrison Burton, the 2024 season is only a few races in. What do you, what would you grade yourself so far in your team this year? Yeah, it's been interesting. You know, uh, there's been races we've been fast and, and races we haven't. Um, and there's been runs and races where we've been fast and runs where we haven't. It's a uh, little bit lacking a consistency. You know, I look at Atlanta as a good day for us. Car drove really good all day. Uh, I thought Daytona the whole weekend was going well <laughs> until like lap six, but you know, thinking you know, of the duels and, and just coming out of the gates pretty strong with those first two races, um, it had our struggles for sure in Vegas and uh, Phoenix. So uh, this is a great opportunity for us to kind of right the ship and, and get back on the good side, um, you know, of where we need to be. So uh, feel good about our package for Bristol. Feel like we'll have a good car. Just got to go make the most of it. And folks in here on Bristol, no more dirt. Uh, yeah. What's the excitement factor for that? And hey, your dad got a few wins here back in the day. Uh, has, he, did he give any, has he given you any advice getting back here to spring race? Yeah, it's it's funny, you know, it's changed so much since he was, you know, racing here as far as the resin and the PJ1 and uh, the track age and the car. I mean, everything's different. It's still Bristol though, and you still have to drive the same way. So, you know, all the things he taught me about it when I first came here kind of stand true. And, um, you know, I'm excited to be on, on the concrete. It's uh, more fun for me. I definitely would say that's my specialty over to the dirt. Um, I think the racing will be better, so excited to try and uh, put on a good show for the fans in the daytime. I think it'll be really fun to run the top and, and kind of get both lanes going. Should be should be a blast. And thankfully, Mother Nature stayed home. It hasn't done that here in the spring race many times. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. The, I, I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch. We'll see if a rainstorm pops up, but we've been good so far, for sure. All right, thank you. We look at Hendrick Motorsports coming up on 80,000 laps led. How gratifying and how cool is it to be a part of that history, giving you the lead 5,000 of those laps yourself? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a lot of laps, uh, for sure. So. Um, and a lot of race wins, you know, encapsulated into, into all those laps that they've led as a company. So definitely proud to have been a very, very small part of that. But I've enjoyed my time, and hopefully we can keep adding to it. I asked Larson that question over there. He said there was a lot of catching up to do to, you know, catch up to the Johnsons and the Gordons of the world. Yeah. Do you think you all have it in them between you, Byron, Bowen, and Larson to kind of catch up to that crowd? I hope so. Um, yeah, well, obviously time will, you know, time will tell, but... It's a different era than, than what it used to be, you know, just as far as guys don't seem to, um, you know, dominate entire days. You know, it seems like you might have guys be good at, at certain stages. But there again, Kyle dominated at, at Vegas. So, um, yeah, I, I guess anything's on, the, anything's on the table. And would you say parity plays into that kind of? I think the car, you know, configuration and, and the box being really tight, probably more than anything. Thank you. You uh, you got the win here in the 2020 All Star race. You contended for a lot of wins in the Gen Six. I know a lot of your fans starting to ask, "Hey, when's Chase going to win again? When's Chase going to win again?" So, how close are are you guys to getting back to victory lane? Could it even happen here at Bristol this weekend? I don't see why not. I mean, I definitely think we've been working in a good direction. Thought we had. You know, better pace last week than we've been having, which was really good. I, I thought, you know, had a had a shot at the pole there on Saturday, which was the first time we've had a shot at the pole in, in a while. So, um, you know, I, I think for us, you, you got to take those small those small gains and, and continue to build on them and enjoy them, enjoy you know, and enjoy the process too. So, um, I think our team's doing that. We're going to keep working hard, and I don't have a crystal ball, but uh, we're certainly going to keep working working at it to try and, and make ourselves better each week and, and um, you know just try to find that little bit every time we show up. Ty Gibbs, you got some sleek new Sirius XM colors on you this weekend, man. But uh, last year in the fall, you got a top five here. So far this season, you're hanging out in the top ten in points to start the year. So obviously off to a great start. What do you got to do this weekend? Maybe capitalize, get your first win. 
Um, just got to execute like we did last year. Just need to do a little bit more. I had some issues and it could my my side. So I think we should have a good car this year. I don't think a whole lot's changed. So we should go hammer down and have fun. Overall, not many changes to the Toyota other than just rarely the way it looks. How pleased are you so far with uh, all the tracks you've been to so far this year? Yeah, it's been great. You know, I can't thank JGR enough and, 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 and Toyota. You know, with all of our guys on our, our air department JGR, they just did such a good job with this new body and, and we're happy with it. And, and so it's good to see them uh, working hard and it's paying off. Absolutely. Good job, man. Thank you.